Hello and a warm welcome to The Beam, where curiosity meets conversations, taking us a step further into the future we desire. I'm Sunes Nathaniel, and on today's episode, we turn our attention to what the data says about the Tinubu-led administration, even as we also examine how high cost of internet services and property rights are limiting factors when it comes to the growth of Nigeria's economy, that digital economy which we keep speaking about. But before we get into all of this, let us bring you first our spotlight and then the quick tech update. And when we come back, we'll delve right into the heart of this issue. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome. Here is a quick tech update for the week. Nigeria has been selected to benefit from a $100 million fund for developing artificial intelligence infrastructure and capacity. The Minister of Communications, Innovation and Digital Economy, Mr. Bosun Tijani, disclosed this while assessing Nigeria's participation at the 79th session of the United Nations General Assembly in New York. Meanwhile, the federal government has held a high-level workshop in Abuja on the government's service portal GSP to enhance digital governance and improve public service delivery in the country. Key stakeholders, including MDAs and COISA, discussed the GSP's development. Permanent Secretary Engineer Farouk Yabo emphasized its potential to revolutionize citizens' access to government services. In the meantime, the National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure has highlighted some opportunities to fast-track industrialization in Nigeria. The executive vice chairman, Khalid Halilu, emphasized at the Wall Stage Economic Summit that there is a need for collaboration between government, private sector, and research institutions. He also stresses the importance of developing local industries, sustainable technologies, and a skilled workforce to drive economic growth, technological innovation, and national development. On the international scene, the World Health Organization, WHO, says it has approved the use of the first diagnostic test for MPOX, a key tool in countries battling outbreaks. More than 800 people have died across Africa from MPOX, where the disease has been officially detected in 16 countries, according to the African Union's Disease Control Center. In another development, an Australian court upheld a $418,000 fine for Elon Musk's ex for failing to cooperate with the regulator's request for information on anti-child abuse practices. Now, X had challenged the fine, but the court ruled it was obligated to respond to the e-safety commissioner's inquiry about addressing child exploitation material. And finally, TikTok creator Terry Ann Thomas, who is known as Mr. Prada to 4.3 million followers, has been charged with second-degree murder in the death of 69-year-old therapist William Abraham. Abraham's body was found wrapped in a top in Louisiana. Thomas was arrested in Texas after allegedly driving the victim's stolen car. He's currently awaiting extradition. And that's your quick tech update for this week. Stay tuned for more cutting edge news from the ever evolving world of technology. I'll see you. The this high level engagement is attended by top officials, including the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Communications, Innovation and Digital Economy, Mr. Farouk Yabo, the managing director of Galazi Backbone, Professor Ibrahim Adenyaju, and other development partners are present. Ladies and gentlemen, the central focus of the discussion is the government service portal, a platform designed to simplify and digitize access to government services for Nigerian citizens. The platform is considered part of efforts to digitize public service delivery. Easy access to government services, it means efficient way of uh, getting your services as against going to polo queues in offices. You just go onto your computer and then you put in what you want and then you get feedbacks. And there is no waiting. That's what it means. Today, many of these things you have to go physically to an office to be able to access. But with the government, uh, single government service portal, citizens are now empowered to come to one single location within the internet space and to be able to access services of all MDEs. The portal is developed in collaboration with the Korea International Corporation Agency and the idea is to foster transparency in delivery of government services. 
government um, service portal is supposed to be a one-stop shop for citizens facing government services. Um, the whole idea is to um, bring all public services to one um, website wherein citizens can log in, a single login, and then be able to access several services. So we have examples. So for example, um, we have the um, international driver's license, you have the, uh, sorry, international passports, you have the driver's license, you have um, a few others that you have to get from the government. There's uh, exactly, there's your NIN registration, and a few other services. So the idea is, other than some of these services are actually across different ministries, but we need a single website that brings them. So citizens don't need to go to different websites to know to have access to these um, services. A crucial element of the portal is the government data exchange platform, which is expected to enable real-time information sharing between government agencies. This is expected to improve collaborations across the public sector and deliver more efficient services to Nigerians. Soonest Nathaniel, Channel TV News. Welcome back. You're still watching The Beam. And as earlier stated, we'll be looking at internet high costs, property rights, and what does the data say about Tinubu's government. We are joined here in the studio by Mr. Sheyi Oluafemi. I got it right. <laughs> Sheyi Oluafemi, <laughs> who leads the research for development department of the Data Fight Foundation, where data is properly processed to provide narratives for development. Also joining us via Zoom is Mr. Frank Elia, who is an editor with Tech Cabal. Uh, gentlemen, you you're welcome to the program. Yeah, thank you, Sunest. Good to put a face to the... Mr. Elanya, can you hear us? Yes, sir. All right. You're welcome. All right, let's begin with you. In these times yeah. when Nigerians are, you know, facing different challenges and all that, people are asking, are we just ranting? Are we just saying these things? Or is there something to back it up? Is there something concrete in the data that suggests that indeed what we are saying, some of these complaints are for real. What does the data show? Of course. Um, uh, thank you, Sinest. Yeah, the people's feelings are valid. Uh, the complaints are valid. Um, it's backed up by data. They are not just making it up. If they say that um, life, the life is hard and there's a lot of hardship, the standard of living is uh, uh, getting uh -huh. high, while incomes are not are that are very quite rigid upwards, their incomes are not going up. Where whereas the prices of the essential things, the essential commodities, fuel, energy, food, and all of that is increasing. So it's getting hard to get by, both for the the poorest of the poor and even the middle class. They are all feeling this now. Um, but the way one looks at it all, um, we, we are measuring governance. What is the government doing about this? Um, how much of the uh, blame can we place on the government is to, one, look at what is expected and um, where the government is, one. Um, and we might just look at it from two angles, that is wealth and uh, welfare. In terms of wealth, uh, we might say that this government, talking about creating wealth, this government is doing fine in terms of productivity. Yeah. I mean, real productivity. The, the real GDP is showing increases. Um, the first quarter of this year against the first quarter of last year, for, I mean, Q1 2024, the GDP is higher than the Q1 of, of, of um, first quarter of 2023. The second quarter of this year, the GDP growth I mean, I mean, that means how much we were all able to produce in, in money terms. That is, uh, what you have been able to produce with what I've been able to produce, the gentlemen and ladies in the house, what we have all been able to produce in real terms, uh, removing inflation. We have been able to produce more this um, second quarter against second quarter of last year. The same thing, um, I mean, first quarter and second quarter. So it looks as it were that by the time we get to the third quarter, by the time we get the result, the way it's going, it's looking like it will keep going, getting better by so, now. So I, I want you now, you, you've gone to the data part of, you know, balancing it. The question is, does it show that the government might be working or is it something that we cannot just place on the government? Yeah, um... You know, there, there is uh, something that's one of the ma major issues uh, with this government is inflation. Mm. The real issue, that when I, that's when we move to the welfare side. Um, why people are complaining is because we're buying 
fuel at um, I think around one is it one sixty five or something just before Tinu and uh, it's like almost times ten. I'm feeling it now. So what the, my problem with the, the the government is that I can't my salary is the same thing and um, I'm having to spend double, triple, sometimes sometimes quadruple of what I'm spending on food and all of that. So if there's anybody have if anybody has a problem with the government, it's like is that we can afford things and it's your policy and mm. people are saying we pin it on your policy mm. especially the two things that you did before you did these two things our life was hard enough but we were getting by but in, immediately you did these two things um it was like a destabilization people just couldn't even hold it together mm. and those are the, the two while you blame it on the government in, uh, of course the government is to be blamed for what works and what does not work yeah that, that's what that's what leadership is all about <laughs> they would say that so no leader will tell you no it's not my fault it's your fault when it's when it's bad and it's your glory so it's, it's for uh, your acclaim when it's, when, it's it's, when, it, when it's going good. So uh, the, the, the stable government introduced two policies, which is the floating of the exchange rates and um, the deregulation, the final deregulation of mm. the, of the uh, downstream oil sector, which, yeah. is, which brought about uh, the removal of total subsidy, in quotes, in, uh, initially. <laughs> for, um, you get it. So, but um, uh, like uh, one of my slides that I share with you showed that um, really, the issue, what is causing this pain mostly, is the exchange rates fl fl fluctuation. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is dependent on imports. You know, probably most of the things you see in this room, <laughs> most of some of our own apparels, even our shoes and all of that, all they are all imported. So when, so because we are import, the, the core of our economy is from, apart from food. Apart mm. from food, it's it's uh, the, the core of, of economies from abroad. So it brings it raises the price of things. Even some of our food, we import them. Wheat, all, all, all some of even the raw food, we import them and the processed ones. All right. So when you have um, uh, um, the 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 dollar, I mean the foreign exchange um, price, I mean rates like uh, by multiplying by two by three. It has an effect. And what happens? When I now bring in the clothing, when I bring in the raw materials to produce Coca-Cola, the raw materials to produce um, what have you, all the things that we do here, now I'm a seller. I'm also going to pay. Uh, so I will sell those things at higher rates. And when those people buy those things at higher rates, the farmer also will now, because the farmer has to buy um, whatever right. chemicals from me at a higher rate, because so he too will sell at a higher rate. At, at a higher rate. So some 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 of this inflation are not natural. I mean, but I mean some of them are imports imported inflation. All right. So I'm, 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 I'm going to hold. I'm going to hold. I'm going to hold on there. Let's come to you, Mr. Elia. We, we have said that. Hey, the people are feeling this. Now let's go to the high cost of internet service. How is it also affecting that move into that digital economy that we are looking at? Okay, thank you so much. Um, it, it is very um, clear because um, when you when you sell airtime um, at a higher cost, um, it, it means that those um, people who are going through the inflation will not be able to afford it. Um, there's a lot happening to their wallet, uh, and uh, a lot of uh, um, their salaries not meeting up with um, with the pace of the inflation that is happening on uh, um, on a on a monthly basis. Um, if, unless you drive down some of this cost for them, uh, um, the consumption how high as it should. Um, telecom operators and also three other IT, IT companies. All right, we're going to be taking a short break. And when we return, we're going to have all those takes. Something that has been revolving around here is the word salary, income. And then we're going to ask ourselves, how can this get better? And what really needs to put in place to ensure that, you know, that digital economy, that growth which you want to see, you know, comes into fruition. Don't go away. Stay with us. All right, welcome back. You're still watching The Beam, and we're still here with our guest, uh, Mr. Sheyi Olufemi. And we're looking, at basic, we're looking basically at how that data thing, you know, is showing where we are as a people, economy-wise. I want you to quickly go to economy before we get back to Mr. Elaya, hoping everything's said there. Yeah, great. I can start with uh, 
I use this as to illustrate the, the issue with the digital economy and all of that. How we need to have homegrown, um, common sense economics. On the large scale, I mean, on the macroeconomic scale, if you say, okay, we have a problem with, okay, our problem appears to be that, uh, appears to be inflation. It appears uh, the GDP is growing. You know, we've never had any recession. I mean, we've never had any recession in any of the quarters. We are not even close to that. It's at uh, 3.19 now, even though uh, the Tinubu government uh, campaign that they want, they are aiming at 10%. Hmm. And I see actually them moving something close, even before the end of the year. Probably, I imagine that will be around four plus, four plus uh, growth rates. So if that is not majorly the problem, so the problem is inflation. Mm. I mean, the major problem, talking about welfare. Now, uh, one of the things, so what you do with inflation is you look at the, 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 what is causing this inflation. And usually, sometimes it's a mix, uh, but you have the cost push and the demand pull. Mm. So when there are so many people with money that want to buy limited amounts of things you see you know the way we do it uh, someone says don't worry i can buy it at this amount and this amount so that's demand pool so what the the the, the, the cbn will usually do is to raise the i mean um, rates the mpr is such that the contract people will rather put their money in the bank so that it um appreciates. It, it appreciates and spend it so that they clear the, the 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 road for some of us who don't even have anything to so that we can buy at cheaper cheaper rates so that's when there is that's demand pull but and then there is cost push where it is just the cost of production that is being passed to people hmm. somebody's producing stuff in kano they are bringing it down to abuja the cost of uh, fuel the cost of repairs and all of that is making the food item to become costlier. So now, what we see here is almost like a mix of, of, of the two, and but it's it's it it leans more on on the cost push, the cost of raw materials, even to produce coke. Some of their uh, recipe are in, are imported, so and they are bought in dollars times three times four. Now, what you can do is. If, if you ask me, I will look at the, the productive side. Hmm. What is working? Look at the finan look at the uh, uh, telecommunications and information services, for instance, that we're talking yeah, about, about yeah. that are increasing. It's the, it's the third contributor to the GDP, to our productivity. It, it, it's the third. After, after crop production and trade, it is 16.36. Hmm. That is, of all the incomes... For instance, that we we made in the last in, in Q2, that is the last uh, the second quarter of this year. Yeah. Every for every hundred naira that the uh, the whole Nigerian, the every Nigerian hand, sixteen naira out of it was Spent. made from telecommunications. Whoa. So if you are the government and you see something going wrong there, and you have all these policies, and you're seeing that inflation is creeping in here, that the, that might uh, when you start having that, there might be decrease. In in uh, in subscription, people start managing their data, data yeah. so they are not buying as much as as they were before. The profits begin to reduce. Those guys in this, that sector begin to think of laying off people hmm. and to contribute to the uh, to the unemployment problem we are already having. It's been increasing. I think it's about five point three percent now. It's been increasing up every quarter. Unemployment has been has been increasing. I mean, those who just work for one hour a week. So, if I were the government, I would look at what is working. Hmm. Let's stabilize that place. All Not right. to should touch what is working. Crop production, they are doing some of these things. They are giving fertilizers, boosting inputs. So, it's the cost of inputs, the cost of production. So, when you look at the sectors that are really, really thriving, that are contributing to incomes, you protect them. You defend them. All right. You defend crop production. You defend trade. Uh, thank God for the. Um, economic stabili uh, stabilization uh, bills that are being passed around, SMEs, uh, most of these trade guys are saying, oh, oh we're going to relax um, um, VAT and all of Tariffs. that. So those, if you know trade is working, that's, you know, there's so many subsectors, almost right. like 100. So if these guys are working, so focus on the parts that are, that are working, don't right. let anything touch it. I know what, I'll come back to you. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Lanya, are you with us? Quickly, I want you to say, what can we do to ensure that the cost, again, you know, as he has just started off, as the, that the cost is not as much as we are saying it? What can the government do right now? I mean, the cost when it comes to high cost of internet services. I think, first of all, there needs to be a synergy between the states and the federal government. Um, if you look at the taxes that the federal government or that the, uh, that the telecom operators are 
paying presently, they say they are paying about 53 taxes, uh, 54 taxes actually. Um, so if you look at that number of taxes, it's actually um, heavy for one um, operator to be paying. So, and that's also because of the misalignment between the federal government and also the state government. If they align together and then you find a way to streamline the taxes that this industry pays, it will help to reduce a lot of the pressure that they feel. And then also you have issues around, um, like he mentioned, um, a lot, um, in fact, 100% of their inputs is around import. So mm -hmm. they, they import everything, and because of that, they are exposed to the dollar. And um, aside from that, also is the custom duties that they also have to pay, you know, and also some of the taxes that um, the federal government collects on some of the technological uh, um, raw materials. If the if the government can look at those taxes and maybe not even try to waive it, because I mean, if you're bringing in um, equipment into the country, there should be a way to subsidize some of those costs. For you, that's that's one aspect. The other aspect would be in electricity. Twenty-four hours of power that the telecom industries generate is, uh, um, they do it themselves. They fund it themselves, and that's a lot of money that they are spending. In fact, well, one of the biggest items, the cost item on the telecom books, is power. So, if the government can find a way to increase the amount of power that they supply to the federal, uh, to, to telecom operators. I know that recently um, they had this uh, policy where they said that uh, operators can generate their own power from the grid, mm -hmm. you know, but that needs to be a lot more done um, towards ensuring that they pay less, especially, you know, with diesel supply. Uh, um, many of them um, uh, um, buy it at uh, a high cost, and of course, you know that price keeps, uh, keeps in increasing. And as much as it increases, that's how much they are paying for the um, for the cost um, or, uh, of this that they are paying. Mm. And that also lends itself to the fact that they will not be able to invest as much. In fact, this year there has not been much um, telecom investment in the industry, and that's the reason why you have poor quality internet all over the place. You know, um, Intel, for instance, said they wanted to raise $550 million, but they can't do that if investors are looking at the market and they don't think that they have enough confidence to come into the market. So there needs to be some confidence in the market, and that has to do with what he said about protecting this industry that pays uh, and that contributes the third highest um, to the GDP um, of our country. So do something drastically needs to be done. And you know that the months they have been asking for increase in tariff, maybe the government just needs to um, uh, um, review that their stance of not reviewing, of not increasing those tariff, because they themselves say, oh, look, um, other industries have uh, um, increased their tariff. Why can't we also mm -hmm. increase our own tariff? You know, that would have been an incentive for many of them, you know, to, uh, um, to bring in capital to improve their network uh, infrastructure, but they're not doing it because they feel like the government doesn't care about us, so we're just gonna survive until right. something else gives. All right, thank you very much. So I'll come to you and I'll, yeah. I'll close with you in one minute. Yeah. Where are those places, key areas? Let's go about it, where the government should focus now. Give me three, if you can. All right, uh, one, food. Food, crop, mm -hmm. especially crop production. Yeah. Uh, everything they can do to bring down the price of food. Mm -hmm. And I think it begins with security um, for the farms so people can return back to those... Um, um, the farms. The farms. That's where insecurity is where people are being killed almost every day, daily. Mm -hmm. So uh, security, uh, so, so that we can have physical security, we can have food security. Yeah. Um, so, and then... Um, telecoms? Telecoms, please. And energy. Energy. I, I would say, <laughs> I would almost say probably energy alone, if I, if I could say that. Mm. Because energy is the greatest cost of input. All right. In my life, energy is a problem. All right. <laughs> Thank you. So. Thank you very much. <laughs> we have very limited time. Thank you, gentlemen, for Thank coming you, on the program Thank you very today. much, Sunes. Uh, All right. See you sometime. All right, friends, that's what we have for you on this episode of The Beam. I'm Sunes Nathaniel, and we're going to be leaving you with our top five videos of the week. Do not forget to continue to stay engaged and stay curious. See you very soon. We begin this week's countdown with a clip from Politics Today, where senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falano, expresses surprise at how members of the House of Representatives say they are not aware of the corruption within Nigeria's prison system. It's for me, people. 
is for big men and women. If you are a man of means or a woman of means, and you are sent, you are detained in our prisons or correctional centers, you are going to be accommodated in the VIP section. In fourth place, we see Governor Sim Fubara vow to resist alleged plots to disrupt local government polls in River State. Why do you want to stop the process of election? Coming third on our countdown is a short clip in which we see the military dismiss private rating Seaman Abbas Haruna. Second on our countdown is the general discussion around the case involving the Falanos, Bob Risky, and social media influencer, Very Darkman. Our most viewed video of this week is a clip from Politics Today in which senior lawyer and rights advocate Femi Falano denies knowing popular cross-dresser Bob Risky following a leaked audio regarding corruption within the Nigerian prison system. Uh, Bruce Brisky never spoke to me. I have never met him. I do not know him from Adam. He was a to have spoken to my son, a uh, flying uh, fast. That's it for our countdown today. Join us next week for more.